Uh, when you hired a uh, commerce secretary, I think the argument was if you want someone to create jobs, you hire someone who's created jobs. If you want someone to oversee the natural resources of our state, you've not really hired someone who has experience in that. How do you justify that? How do you explain that? Well, you know, I think we have dual challenges uh, at the agency, as uh, Sec Secretary Degney Mark was just pointed out. Uh, the first is to protect our natural resources, but the second is to get the agency to work in a, in a supportive way so that we are creating jobs. And I think we all understand that the agency has been under tremendous stress. We have an extraordinary group of dedicated employees there uh, who are feeling somewhat demoralized. Uh, and what Deb Markowitz brings to this job is a proven track record of being able to take an agency of state government uh, and transform it into a place that delivers for customers at the same time that she accomplishes the mission of protecting our natural resources. So I think the beauty of this team is that uh, Deb has that experience, knows how to do it. She also cares deeply about the environment. Uh, it's not new to her. Uh, and David Mears has a long track record uh, in environmental science and environmental law, so I think it's a, a great team. Who are the customers? The customers are the people of the state of Vermont who want to grow jobs and get through the permitting process. It's but they're the also Vermonters. Resources. Well, sure. Obviously, the, the, the customer ultimately is the state of Vermont and protecting our natural resources. But we know that the agency's job is to try to find the balance uh, between the need for economic growth and job creation uh, and protecting those resources. And you know, there's, there's a lot of factors to this job. It isn't just jobs. You know, as a hunter, I can tell you that uh, I find it uh, concerning that 23% down, roughly, it's an approximation at this point, but they were down 23% on our buck harvest this year. Vermont's got to be a state that has extraordinary natural resources for hunters, for fisher, fisher people, for sports people. So there's a lot of jobs that come under ANR, and there's no one a better leader than Doug Markowitz. As I left the Secretary of State's office, I expect to do the same thing here, which is to, um, to be extremely dedicated to the mission of the agency. And that's protecting our, our natural resources as, as a state. That's our most important legacy that we're leaving for our children and grandchildren. Um, but I know that that, that can be done understanding that, that there are also people who are relying on the agency to get their business accomplished. And what I have heard from developers and, and business owners around this state is that they, they feel proud of Vermont's environmental record. Um, they, they like doing business here because they like being part of a state that is dedicated to environmental values. But when they come to the Agency of Natural Resources, they don't want to be just dropped in a morass where they don't know what to expect, uh, where they don't know uh, when they'll get an answer. What we've heard, I think both of us on the campaign trail, is we just want an answer. We don't mind that it's no. We just need at some point to have certainty. Do we get to go ahead with the project or don't we? And so that's an example of how you can balance um, the, the, um, the interests of, uh, of Vermonters as a whole and our interest in preserving our natural environment with recognizing that there are also customers who need to be served by that office that that unless they get an answer to their application in a in a consistent and reasonably speedy way that uh, that they're going to be they're going to feel poorly served and that's going to affect uh, job growth in the state of Vermont. You know I think it's worth bringing up John I have said so many times that Vermont's economic opportunity, as well as our obligation to uh, climate change and meeting the challenge of climate change, uh, lie in a combined effort to rethink the way we do business. And a and is going to be a really important piece of that puzzle. As we <coughs> face the challenges of getting off our addiction to oil and moving to other technologies, this agency is going to play a critical role in making sure that Vermont leads in renewable energy, that we lead in efficiency. But there's a bigger piece. And this morning I was at a ribbon cutting right here in Barrie, SBE, uh, cutting a ribbon for a, an extraordinary plant that's going to make a critical component in electric cars. Now they got through that permitting process in 45 days. So there's an example about how Vermont can contribute to our obligation getting off our addiction to oil, create 
manufacturing jobs here in Vermont again, and do it in a way that made sense not only for the future of the planet, but for job growth and for Vermonters who are looking for jobs. So this is a big challenge. But I will say this, having come back from uh, meetings with governors from around 50 states, where they're apologetic about talking about the challenge of climate change. Many of them deny that it exists. I'm here to tell you as a governor that Vermont understands it's the biggest challenge that we face as mankind, that there are both a moral obligation to have Vermont lead in getting off our addiction to removal, uh, sorry, to, to oil and other uh, oil-based products, at the same time they move to renewables, and then I think we can help to lead the way for the rest of the country in getting this job done by creating jobs and putting dollars in Vermonters' pockets as we do it. What, are, what would you say are the, are the biggest environmental issues that are specific to Vermont? I mean, obviously, it sounds like climate change climate internationally change. is your biggest, but, but what about... Well, we've got to clean the lake up. Course. You know, we've been, we're very serious about cleaning up the lake. Uh, as I've said, we've spent a lot of money. We've had a lot of uh, programs that have great titles. Uh, but we still have a lake that, frankly, stinks during the summertime in parts. That people don't want to swim in. You certainly wouldn't want to eat the fish out. Uh, we got a lot of progress to make there. Uh, so, and then you can go to issues like renewables and having a cogent and thoughtful way to cite green power in Vermont to make sure that we're leading as we, the rest of the country, in moving to solar, small hydro. Uh, we have so many challenges and so many fronts that. Uh, there are huge opportunities for us, but we have to seize them. What are you going to do to clean up the lake? Well, the first thing we're going to try and do uh, is combine uh, the, let's put it this way, the first thing we're going to do is measure our outcomes so that we're not just throwing money at it. Second, uh, work cooperatively to put together a plan with the federal government that will serve us well. Third, try to get the waivers so that we can take all of the disparate federal programs and make sure that we're centralizing those federal dollars in a place where we can get at them. And fourth, we're going to have to start getting serious about making sure that uh, phosphorus runoff uh, does not pile into the lake every time we get a good downpour, and that our municipal centers are doing their job to keep uh, wastewater out of the um, you said during the campaign that you don't think the permit process in Vermont needs legislative reform, needs internal agency reform. Um, how precisely do you do that? What is it that people can do when you're governor that they aren't doing right now? Well, you know, I think, uh, as Deb just mentioned, the first thing we have to do is have a customer-based delivery system. And that Marcus is going to work very hard to make that happen. Uh, but secondly, um, I think that coord better coordination between local permitting and the state of Vermont's processes would do more to help the problem than uh, more radical reform. You know, we've seen more reform efforts come through the permitting process uh, every few years by politicians, you know, than I can count on my fingers. And we still find that there are challenges. So let's rebuild the agency. Let's rebuild the morale of the hardworking workforce there. Let's put in someone who knows how to turn it into a customer-based entity, which we will. And then let's see how we're doing. Does rebuilding the agency mean more people? Well, you know, I'm going to, there's not any money right now for more people. We all get that. We have a $112 million budget to solve. But I do think that um, we should start by, and, and Deb agrees with this, uh, finding ways to use what we have to deliver to the customer in a more efficient manner. So I'll, I'll give an example within the agency that's okay. You know, there's there are many different silos. So you have an applicant who wants to to uh, you know build an industrial park. They need to go. Uh, to uh, a lot of the different silos in DEC, uh, many of whom aren't communicating well with each other. So there's very simple things you can do within an agency to streamline communication um, and to, to make sure that there's a uniform message to the people who are coming in the door. So it's not a major permit reform, although you know I'll tell you one of the things that's missing from, from Act 250 right now is any, any consideration of global warming. And so I, I, so we're going to have a conversation about that at some point. It's, 
how do we make sure that as we're uh, setting environmental standards and making decisions about, uh, about how we're uh, investing resources, that we're doing it understanding that we've got both an obligation um, to, uh, to eliminate greenhouse gas production here in Vermont, but also we need to plan for the future. There is global climate change. And how do we make sure that what we're doing now is taking into account that there, there may well be some of these changes, particularly when we're talking about fish and wildlife and wildlife corridor, corridors and how, how global climate change is affecting that. So you think Act 50 may need to be amended to well, take into account global warming? I, I, I wouldn't go as far as that. I mean, I defer, obviously, to Governor Shumlin on it, but, but I think it's time to start having a conversation about, about global warming. Think about it. When Act 250 was, was written, there wasn't nobody that wasn't even on anybody. It wasn't even in the lexicon, global warming. And so times have changed. And I know that's been Governor Shumlin's priority, and it's been a priority since for many years. And I expect as the Secretary of ANR that, that, that there will be an overlay uh, to what we do that takes into account uh, the issues of global warming. So would that help to override some NIMBY problems? with wind projects and the biomass plant and panel and that sort of thing? Is that you know, you know, one, one of the ideas there? Yeah, I, I think that what's been lacking is a plan and leadership. And that's why you run into the problems that you do with wind uh, and some of the other renewable technologies that Vermont has to move to. Um, so I think what that Marcus is pointing out is the world has changed. We understand that climate change is the biggest challenge that we face as mankind, and we cannot race fast enough to address it for the future of our kids and our grandkids. There's huge economic opportunity there, but there is not an agency of state government currently that has in its title or its mission dealing with the challenges of climate change. Well, and it shows. Let me give you an example. I walked into a bakery in Bradford recently. Sitting around the table was three uh, men who were installing, trying to install, solar projects. They said they were drinking coffee instead of working because they've been held up for four weeks in Montpelier's bureaucracy to get a certificate, of type, a, a certificate of public good for some solar projects that had already been funded and were ready to roll. Equipment here, they just couldn't put them up. Well, there's something wrong with the government that's holding up, putting solar panels up in Vermont. Now, we're not blaming anyone. I'm just saying that the current bureaucracy, and that's what Deb is outlining, was not designed to deal with quick implementation of building solar panels or wind or anything else. So let's acknowledge what we've missed. Let's bring Vermont to the 21st century. Let's lead a lot of the other states that, you know, I almost thought I'm not sure. I had a private meeting with Obama the other day, and you know, all the coal producing plants got up and said, you know, Mr. President, your EPA is on our back. We're trying to create jobs. We want to mine coal, and they're slowing us down. I thought, wow, coming up to my state. we got dead ponds, dead rivers, dead lakes, acid rain, and that's because of your coal. So thank you, Mr. President, for protecting us. But we've got to lead in terms of showing uh, some of these coal-producing states how to get it done right. Are you talking about